Hi, in this video, I'll be showing you how you can set up a form inside MailerLite. My name is Marlon McPherson of MarlonMcPherson.com and let's just get straight into the video. All right, so the first thing you want to do is um, log in and once you've logged into your dashboard, you want to head over to the forms section and um, inside here you'll have four different categories, four different tabs you can select from to create some type of form. Um, the ones that we're going to look at today are embedded forms. This is where you actually design the form with the various fields that you'd like to capture. Typically this is name and email address and then you'll have some code at the end of it that you can just copy and paste into your website. If you don't know how to do this aspect of it, you can always have um, your web developer, web designer, or whoever is maintaining your website do that for you. So as you can see, I have two forms set up here inside this new account. Um, this is on my actual marlonmacpherson.com URL. And um, I have set up these are separate forms to be able to capture different uh, leads for different campaigns. Um, so in order to get a form, uh, an embedded form set up, all you have to do is to head over to here where it says create embedded form. You need to give the form a name. So I'm just gonna call this one uh, test. You wanna save that and continue. At this point, you need to decide which group you'd like to connect this form to. So each time you set up a form, it has to be connected to a group. Now, this is a good thing because it allows you to track who's coming in through which forms and you can send them into a particular group based on the interest, based on what they're signing up for. So for example, I have three groups here. I have my free brand training and I have my standard group, which is just general to so anyone that signs up to my um, newsletter would be basically placed into here. And I have one set up for some other additional training for WordPress that I um, plan to do. So as you can see, you can use the checkbox to select multiple or you can decide to just select one. So in this case, I'm going to just say connected to my general Marlon McPherson group and you can go ahead and click save and continue. At this point, it's um, safe to say that you can add a group as well if you wish to. Now, it, we're inside the edit screen and this is where you, or the design screen, this is where you actually put together your contact form. It shows you this basic template here, which um, essentially just has your email, the email field and subscribe. Now, everything on here is editable. All you need to do is um, hover over the elements. So for example, this text element with the headline and the sub text, you can go ahead and click the edit button there, or you can go ahead and delete it. The same goes for this one. You can go ahead and edit the fields or you edit the button. So let's just say we want to change what it says inside the text fields. You just click edit and on the right hand pane here, it loads up the section where you can actually edit or change the text. So I'm going to call this sign up. I'll just say sign up for goodies. And um, you can change the subtext down here as well. Um, you can change it to anything you want. And um, once you've done that, you can head down to the fields. I've clicked inside the email. And as you can see over here, it automatically loads or changes the um, tab to, or the, the column here to the form fields. So currently you have the email there. So let's say you wanted to add their name. You can go ahead and add a field and it's automatically added the name field. You can click over here on the right and drag to reorder and you can decide whether or not something is mandatory. Now the um, field name is, you can check and uncheck required. The email field is mandatory anyway, so they don't give you that option. And if you click add field again, um, you can go ahead and add any other um, field you'd like to add here. So as you can see, let's say you wanted to 
collect a phone number, it automatically matches up with, well, actually this is the placeholder text here. So you can say um, telephone, telephone for example, and that's what shows up inside the actual uh, box. And uh, when they click to type, it overrides that across there. Typically you would just have the name and email address. If you have a reason to collect additional information, that's fine. Um, but you don't want to have too many fields on your form. So um, it makes it frictionless uh, or as, uh, with um, as little commitments as possible for them to sign up to your email list. So I'm going to go ahead and click the bin icon here um, to delete the uh, phone field and just keep the basics of the form. So now that we've actually put the fields in and we've decided on what it needs to say um, inside the text area, um, we can go ahead and style, um, we can go ahead and change what the button says first of all. Let's just change that to say send. Um, and we can go ahead and uh, save that if we want to. But before we do so, let's look at the top section here. It says subscribe form, which is what we're looking at. And then next to that, you've got success message. If you click on that, this is the generic message that would load up once sub someone's submitted the form. Again, you can go ahead and edit this by clicking the icon there. So at this stage, you can just click the preview button to see what things would look like. All right, so you can view it what, what it would show as on desktop or on mobile. So that's how it would show up on mobile. And um, straight away, you've got a URL that you can copy here to send people to. If say you don't have um, somewhere to place this form, as in you don't have a website, you can send someone directly to this URL, which I'll just copy and paste into here so you can see what that looks like. So this would be just how the page looks that you send someone to. So this is a great way to send someone to a landing um, to a uh, page temporarily whilst you get your website set up. If you go ahead and just say cancel here, um, we go back to the original screen that we had. And here's where we can adjust things like the color, fonts and so on. Um, we can also change the default design of the form. So let's look at that first. So if you click that, we have the um, default and then we have two other options. So we've got horizontal, that's what that looks like. And we've got the card view as well, template. And with this one, you can actually insert an image into it. So you could just click on image and you could then go ahead and um, upload an image to this area from your desktop and have that added into the form. Um, it needs to be something that's appropriate to be used that doesn't really con um, clash with the background. So for example, I've put one of my logos in here and um, this is what that looks like. Let's say you wanted to, I'll just cancel that. Let's say you wanted to change the colors. We're going to use this one here. Um, actually, let's go back to the default, get rid of the image part of it. You have all the design elements for the colors down here at the bottom on this right hand pane. So first of all, the background down here is the actual page that it's on. If you were going to send someone directly to the page, this is what where you would actually change those colors and that's what that can look like. Let's hit the save there. You can change the color of the button by clicking the button text. Now this has two states. You have the, the background, um, which is the standard state that the button is in. So let's, let's say for example, change that to red. And then you have the hover state, which is in black at the minute. So if we hover over the button, it changes to black. Let's say we wanted to change the hover to purple. Um, we just go ahead and click on that color. And as you can see, it changes to purple. Um, we're going to go ahead and save that. And the form itself, we can change um, some elements in here, such as how um, much spacing it's got there, the padding, the width and so on. So you can make some adjustments, make it wider. As you can see, you can change the border radius, which is the rounded corners. At a minute it's on four, if we go higher, it becomes more rounded on the corners. 
and you can decide how the form is aligned, whether it's to the left or center or something else. So as you can see, there's a lot of control there. The form background itself, you have um, the ability to change that. So if say I wanted to change this to, um, let's say a blue color like that, or something else, it doesn't really matter here. This is for demonstration purposes. Uh, you could put a background image in there as well. You have to use the select button. Obviously that doesn't really look that great. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And um, I've canceled everything. So the color is gone. I didn't save it. And if you want to change how the title text is, you can change the fonts here. Uh, let's say we wanted to change it to Montserrat or let's say railway or rallyway, however you say that. And of course, you can change the alignment of the text. I've just centered it there. And the font weight, I could say bold and so on. So you have full control over the design elements. Usually, you don't get this sort of functionality in the standard contact form, or sorry, the standard sign up form from um, email list providers like MailChimp and so on. And you usually have to go to like a third party solution to integrate beautiful designs into your uh, sign up forms like using the bloom plugin which i do have as well from elegant themes um, so this is really great for people who wants to set up a contact form right there on their website so once you've designed your form and you're happy that everything is laid out right what you need to do is go ahead and click next and you'll be brought back to this page here um, You'll see, you can check everything over. The design is there. You can preview it by clicking there like so. And um, you will then need to go down to where it says embed form into your website because that's where um, you will get the code. Now, there are three options here. Um, JavaScript, snippet, HTML code, and show pop-up on a click event. You don't want to check any of the other two except for the HTML one. And um, you can click to copy the entire code here by clicking the button down here, or you can just click within it and highlight everything by doing a control A or command A, depending on which computer you use. Once you copy the text, you just head over to your um, web page and you can just add this code to your page and uh, essentially this will then embed the contact form that you've just designed ready to go on your website so people can fill that out and automatically sign up to your email list. Um, one thing that I um, forgot to mention is that these are double opt-in by default, but you can easily switch to single opt-in or switch off double opt-in. So that means as soon as sign someone signs, uh, uh, sends, uh, submits the form, as soon as someone submits the form, they'll be on your list if you switch this off. If you want people to be able to confirm their email address, which is good practice really to make sure that they really want to go on your list and you're not getting um, spam uh, or fake emails um, from anyone going onto your list, um, at least they'll be able to log into your email, get a confirmation email, click the button to say, yes, I would like to get emails from you. So I generally leave this on um, and that's good practice. So there you have it. That's how you create an embed form for people to sign up to your email list in MailerLite. If you enjoy these videos, please uh, share, like, and subscribe to the channel. And leave me a comment. Let me know um, if you've got any questions on this and if you've got anything that you'd like to see. I do videos on online business strategy. My name is Marlon McPherson. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll catch you in the next video.